Hi, I'm Ashley with Campbell. Thanks for investing your time to help your community be a great place to live. Before you watch the video, make sure to click the subscribe button so that we can help you make educated decisions as a board member. Happy first day of hurricane season to everybody. It's June 1st. We all know what that means, especially those of you that have been in South Florida a long, long, long time. So I um, hope you'll find this presentation uh, valuable. The feedback has been uh, phenomenal every time I do this. So please ask questions. Um, you know, we love questions. We love Q&A. Uh, just to give a little bit of background on myself. Let me just go to the next slide. Um, I'm one of you. I've spent 20 years in this industry. I started in 1999 as a CAM all in South Florida, and I've held various positions over my career and different types of properties. Um, after 20 years, I found a, a you know, a, a calling, if you will. Um, I have a passion for this industry, and I I got into the insurance side because I didn't like what I was seeing from them. And of course, today insurance is such a hot topic of conversation in our industry because of the rates and the market and what's happening. Um, and then in the midst of all this, we get hit by a hurricane, two hurricanes last year, three if you count Puerto Rico because it does affect us and Puerto Rico hits. Um, but I've been doing this for almost uh, four, just over four years now. Um, I'm a licensed stall lines adjusters. I got all my designations through Community Association Institute. I've been an active board member for CAI for uh, 13 plus years. I just finished my term as past president in Southeast Florida. I teach uh, high rise courses for CAI National uh, during their high rise workshops. We have one coming up in July in North Carolina. Uh, so please, uh, if you need any questions or anything, I'm here as a good resource for you. And, and I love helping and mentoring um, professionals that are looking to make a career out of this. A little bit about Altieri Insurance Consultants. Um, we're a family-owned business. It's second-generation business since 1988. We are headquartered in Tampa. Uh, last year, we did open our Fort Lauderdale office. Um, but we do claims in various states. As you see, we're licensed in 20 plus states, but we're going on a large claim at the Naval Base in Louisiana right now, and we've settled that. Obviously, we're uh, we're working estimated over $500 million in claims now on the West Coast from Hurricane Ian um, and uh, trying to do uh, what we do and effectively. And, and we're having a lot of success in, in helping a lot of our clients out um, with getting money in their hands so they don't have to get bank loans or use reserve funds or operating funds or anything of that, or need to special assess. 30 plus adjusters uh, all over the country, um, all over the state. We have a sister office as well in New Jersey. Um, so as a national director of the company, uh, I do a lot of education. Um, I am a, a licensed all lines adjuster. And, um, you know, for me, I wish I had something like this when I was in property management to inform me. I put this class together because I learned so much about this business behind the scenes after I left uh, association management. And I was like, wow, managers should know this stuff as should board members, hence the title, what every board member and manager should know. So um, there's a few things we're gonna come across, um, cover some of them are gonna be familiar, especially if you're a seasoned veteran, which is section one, your property insurance, we're gonna go uh, over the deductibles, what the policy, how that's broken out. That's more a cursory review. Um, then we're going to talk about preconditioned building report. This is a different um, type of preparation, not what we've been taught over the years and years of, you know, hurricane supplies, but different type of look. And we'll go into that. And in the process of filing a hurricane claim, what we've been taught as managers to do for the last how many years as to what you really uh, a better proactive approach and in, in come, especially coming into hurricane season. Here we are day one. And then how these uh, claims are resolved and, and different ways they can go as far as they're disputed. Uh, it's been a challenge nowadays because insurance companies are looking for reasons to deny claims. And it's very unfortunate we're in this position. But let's keep it going. Hello. So let's talk about understanding uh, your insurance policy. We cover three three areas. We don't expect 
every manager to be a subject matter expert on insurance. So this is just cursory review stuff. You have resources like your agent who sells the policy. Um, hopefully, after by the end of this presentation, you'll see how a public adjuster company as a, like Altera would be a great resource for you. Um, but let's let's go through basic stuff that again you should should already know, especially some of those seasoned veterans. I'm sure you've heard these things before. Um, start right off the bat. The Florida statute basically says the association must carry insurance for all the common elements. That's summarize that whole section there. So we need to have insurance. We know the cost is astronomical now. We've been hit with 100, 150% increases over the last year and a half to two years, and it's been challenging. And I don't think that's going to get any better over the next year or so after all these EN claims get paid out, but we can talk about that later. 72303 is specific to windstorm insurance. Um, so no fewer than three, all these, and, and this is covered up on, under every chapter, between 718, 719, 721, they must have sufficient coverage, uh, the amount equal to the maximum loss for a community. What's the maximum loss? How's that defined? That's defined in your insurance appraisal, and we'll touch on that in a second too, um, because there's um, costs, increases on construction materials that are affecting that appraisal cost today, and we'll touch on that. Uh, again, very simple, just understand your property insurance is predominantly made up of two components. You have your windstorm, which is what we're going to be focusing on today, and you have all your other components, all your other causes of loss, if you will. And name perils is what they call it, which is vandalism, fire, smoke, lightning strikes, explosions, any uh, malicious mischief, as they, as they call it. These are what's known your X wind policies. These are the low deductible ones. Of course, nowadays, you know, the floods, you're seeing deductibles as high as $75,000 to $100,000 just for a pipe burst or anything like that. But we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on windstorm today um, and understanding how that is. So there's my little insurance guy. This is the business model of insurance companies. Uh, they love to collect premiums, but they are very challenging to pay the losses. Um, and that's where it behooves you to have a relationship with a public adjusting company. Um, if not ours, hopefully a reputable one, but hopefully it will be ours um, should you have any questions later. But in most cases, and, and I did this class a couple of years ago where insurance premiums made up almost a third of the annual budget uh, for the association. Well, that's probably gone up more. <laughs> it's probably more than a third in today's market. So um, it's very important to understand you know, you're paying this premium for a reason um, to, to, to cover risk, to cover losses. Um, and the reason I'm, I'm being a, very specific about this, because nowadays you're hearing a lot of people that are afraid to file claims. What if, you know, all the insurance companies are pulling out of Florida? Um, you know, what if I file a claim and, and then they won't renew me and they drop us? This is why you have insurance is to cover these type of losses. This is why you're paying that magnanimous premiums every year and increasing premiums every year to cover and protect yourself. Um, so we'll get into more details about that later on. But let's talk about specific endorsements in your policy. For those of you that don't know, endorsements are, are there's many endorsements in a policy, whether it's wind-driven rain or build an ordinance and law, which is an important one, which is why I outlined what ordinance and law is. For those of you that don't know what ordinance of law is, well, basically it protects your property of, from a loss um, and it, it protects any additional costs that you have to endure because of code upgrades. I've actually come across this in my career one time where I had a flood come down from a pipe. And of course, in all places where it ended up on the first floor, it ended up where my hurricane panel was, or not my hurricane, my fire panel rather. And my fire panel shorted out and was dead, was dead. I had to replace the file panel. So my property policy covered the water restoration damage and the water damage from the water. My equipment policy covered a new fire panel. Well, guess what? When you change a fire panel in a building, then you have to bring your whole property up to current fire code. This is where my ordinance and law coverage kicked in. I had to add strobe lights. I had to... Um, all my pool stations were not the right height. They weren't current ADA height, they were too high. They all had to be lowered. 
I had to add enunciators. Um, I had about $180,000 of additional costs because of the code upgrades. That's what ordinance and law is. Why is this important? Well, specifically in Florida, you have what's called impact window requirements um, in Dade and Broward County. And, and I'm sure you're seeing, you're going to see that going through along the coastline shortly. Um, you know, Florida recently passed uh, the kind of safety bill in which everybody has been looking what Dade and Broward has been doing as far as the 40 year recertification, now known the, the milestone inspections. And I don't want to veer off too much on that. But my point is with impact glass and windows on the coastlines, you're going to see requirements. I feel that you're going to see these requirements um, come down the road all through the coast and all the coastlines in Florida and, and probably the mid Atlantic. Um, those that are um, right there for the hurricane damage. So why is ordinance and law important? Because if you get a blowout and you've got to repair these windows and you don't currently have impact glass and you're required to put in impact glass, that's a code upgrade. And that's where ordinance and law comes in and helps with that additional cost and expense. Um, I see a question. Our insurance company would not accept our 12 point insurance appraisal increase. We were told they were not increasing the value for wind policies in Charlotte County. We did pay additional premium for the appraisal increase for X wind. That's interesting. I'd like to talk more about that, Melanie, um, after this class. Um, I have not seen that yet. Um, so that's interesting. So please reach out to me. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that. Um, okay, understanding your windstorm deductible. So uh, the Florida statute specifically talks about seven in 718.11, you know, who determines a deductible? Well, you used to have a couple options, whether it was a 1%, 2%, 3%, 5%. Uh, and when I say those percentages, as a percentage of your total insurable value. Um, again, based on your insurance appraisal. Total insurable value is, you know, it's called TIV. Um, and that's what your appraisal is, identifies what the value of your property is. And that's what's sent to these insurance companies to bid out, um, for lack of a better term, and come back and have them uh, determine a premium for the annual insurance policy. Deductibles maybe has to be consistent with industry, industry standards. Um, and they're based upon your available funds, reserve accounts. But the biggest part of it is the board choose what option to have. We're seeing less and less options today. Um, a lot of insurance companies aren't allowed. I've seen, now I've seen 7% um, deductibles. Um, there's a question, how long does claim stay on the loss rate? I'm assuming you mean the loss runs. Um, usually they look at a five to seven year loss run. But there's a difference when you're talking about claims from act of gods versus claims on other perils. Um, and I'm going to touch on that in a second. So thanks for the question, Jay. All right, let's go to the next slide. So this is a tidbit information I found interesting because I, I was never told. When does the deductible apply? You know, beginning when the hurricane watch or warning is issued by the National Hurricane Center of any part of Florida. And it must be a named hurricane at the time of the first watch or warning of the issues. If not, that a hurricane deductible starts as soon as a storm becomes a named hurricane. Um, that's when it starts. And it ends 72 hours after the last hurricane watch or warning is lifted by the National Hurricane Center. That was a tidbit of information. So a lot of people, you know, wonder, okay, we're in the cone. Does the deductible apply when we're in the, well, let's face it, we're in Florida. We're always in the cone at some point, right? I'm born and raised in South Florida. So I've been through them all. Uh, going back to Hugo, Andrew, all, you know, we had uh, Wilma hit here in 05, 06, and then, of course, Irma. Um, we're always in the cone, but I thought this was interesting, so you actually know when that deductible applies and when it would kick in. <clears throat> okay, we touched on insurance appraisal. Let's see what the law says about insurance appraisals. Basically, the law says you have to update it every 36 months. Uh, if you're in year two and considering an update or your agent says you should get an update, don't. You have another year. Uh, why do I say don't? Because then your total insurable value will go up. Um, the estimate of increase of construction materials in the last year to year and a half is 36%. Let me say that again, 36%. And why am I focusing on construction materials? Because a lot of misunderstanding that people have, whether it's board members or managers, is 
They think the insurable values in many cases is based on real estate value. It's not, it's based on construction value. Um, I've had many times where board members goes, hey, the real estate market is booming. Does that mean our values are booming and you know what our building's worth is booming? No, absolutely has nothing to do with the construction costs. But because we're in a market right now where these construction materials have gone up so much, then you can almost bet your bottom dollar that your total insurer value will increase if you're due for an appraisal update this year. Um, so be prepared for that because obviously with a larger value amount, you're gonna get a larger premium quote. So here's an example of how that works. So let's say, you know, and like I said, total deductible ranges usually from two to 5%. Again, I've seen 7% as of lately as an option. And of course, the higher the board selects, the lower the premium. But again, you're not getting as many options nowadays just because of the, the way the insurance market is. But if a building had a total insurable value of $80 million and they had a 3% windstorm deductible, then your total deductible is $2.4 million. So I like to point out the difference, you know, your insurance agents always give you the option, do you want a calendar year deductible or per occurrence? Well, you want a uh, calendar year. Um, and why do I say that? Because Florida is Florida. You know, we're here, we get hit by more than one storm a year sometimes. Um, and a lot of people's like, well, I shouldn't put the claim in, it's gonna raise my increase. I'm like, and here's the misnomer about the, filing the claim for a hurricane or a tropical storm claim. Act, by acts of God, insurance companies are technically not allowed to increase you. Um, if you have pipe bursts or slip and falls, yes, they can ding you on that. Um, but if it's a hurricane claim, they can't ding you individually. What they do is they ding everybody. These rates you're seeing now are due from all the climate events that's happened over the U.S. in the last year to two years. Um, even going back to Irma claims that have been paid two, three years ago. This is what they call the global cost of reinsurance. Let's get, let's increase the rates, make sure these insurance companies don't go under or don't go into receivership um, and, and see what happens. The problem is we're getting hit with major weather events consistently where we usually had a bad year and then it quieted down for a little bit. So we're hoping for a quiet hurricane season this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this is due from tornadoes, from hailstorms, from wildfires. And this is all over the country, uh, not just hurricanes. So uh, they ding everybody. They don't ding you as an individual. And why do I say calendar year's preference? Because if you file damages, and I'm going to show you in a bit how that works, then your deductible decreases. So let's go back into some history. Excuse me. Uh, in 2004, the hurricanes, we had four hurricanes make landfall in Florida, especially in the uh, near Tampa, Orlando area, where you see the path of three of them that hit directly. Uh, well, so let's use that as an example, um, going back to uh, my total insurable value of $80 million at a 3%. So if I have a $2.4 million deductible and Charlie comes through and causes $400,000 of damages, you report it. You're going to get denied because they're going to say you're beneath your deductible, but because you're in the same calendar year, now your deductible is reduced to $2 million. Francis comes through and then does $500,000 in damages. You report that, and then your deductible now is $1.5 million. And this is, again, if they agree that it's $500,000 in damage. I'm rounding numbers so you can understand how the calendar year deductible works. Um, Hurricane Ivan comes through, $1.2 million in damage. Now your deductible is only three hundred dollars for that calendar year. And then Hurricane Jean comes through and causes $800,000 in damages. Well, guess what? You've met your deductible, and you, now you have $500,000. Um, there are ways to have the right team members in place to inspect your property. And we're going to go into that um, because, you know, when Charlie comes through and causes $400,000 of damages, you may have over a million dollars of damages and not know it, or $2 million, or $10 million. Um, so I'm going to give you examples of that later on in the show. But I wanted you to understand here on how the per calendar year deductible works. If you have the per occurrence, then your deductible is $2.4 million for each one of these hurricanes, which is on an occurrence basis. So I, I've never seen anybody select it. Agents give the option. Um, but you really want to do the calendar year if you don't already, if you're not already in that. 
So again, this is a little review. Um, I, those of you that have been out there managing properties for a long time, you know what's covered, what is not covered. However, again, this is a misnomer. Um, when we're talking about windows and sliding glass doors. So let's see what the statute says. You know, any portion of the property that's insured by the association against, prop against a property loss, which is damaged by an insurable event, shall be reconstructed, repaired, or replaced as necessary by the association as a common expense. So what does that mean? Um, I got a question from Peter Lynch. Why is the insurance higher under the 718 than single family home? My house was quoted for full coverage at 21 as an HO3. I was quoted and our exterior coverage under 718 documents is 3,700 plus others have to cover the interior. Insurance had gone up 251% in one year. Um, HO3 policies are very different, Peter, because um, you're covering content, you're covering everything inside. It's not similar to an association policy, which is, you know, just the common elements um, and the building envelope itself. Um, again, we can talk about that in, in more detail, uh, but HO3 is very different than an association policy. Uh, what 718 requires, uh, we've all heard the term, you know, drywall in, the association protects everything drywall in. Um, and all the common areas and limited common elements and the building envelope, which is the point on the slide, you know, the envelope includes windows and sliding glass doors. A lot of people tell me, oh, no, but those are the owner's responsibility. Um, and I'm like, it's the owner's responsibility in most cases to maintain and maintain the hardware of locking mechanisms, sliding glass door reels what have you, but the actual framing, what's called the fenestration system, um, the framing, the windows, uh, the sliding glass doors is a protection. There are three components that protect the property, concrete, windows and sliding glass doors and roofing. And your insurance policy covers it um, from an insurable event. And that's the key words in the statute is an insurable event. A hurricane is an insurable event. Um, so a lot of times people don't understand and I dealt with this in a lot of Hurricane Irma claims in South Florida. We didn't get a lot of category three, two storm winds, but winds reached up to 95 miles an hour in some areas in Southeast Florida. Um, and the damaging fact from Irma was, Irma was such a, a slow moving storm. It didn't come across like Andrew did in a two hour time period. It came from the South and it was an 18 hour event. And every engineer that I've spoke to will tell you that even if it's a slower, uh, not a strong storm, even though it was only a 95 mile an hour storm, um, that can cause more damage as a longer duration over an area versus a cat five moving through the state in a two hour period. So Irma caused, um, and Irma is known as the most costly hurricane in the state of Florida. And I'm sure those numbers will be beat by Hurricane Ann. We'll see how that turns out. Um, but understand that your windows and sliding glass doors is covered. Uh, I have a question from Karen. Can you address any difference between condos and other HOAs? I am part of 222 units. So HOAs, um, you're only required to ensure the common elements, whether it's a clubhouse, uh, exterior walls, anything like that. Every home within the HOA has to have their own policy. Um, and that goes back to the HO3 policies. Um, so yes, there's a, there's a difference, uh, from HOA. Um, if you don't have a clubhouse or even, even a guardhouse should be covered if you have security and there's a guardhouse, that's part of the, the HOA policy should be any structure that's not a home is essentially part of the HOA property. All the single family homes have to have their own policy to cover everything within their, their lot. Uh, got a question from Charles. Insurance companies are now throwing in our faces, 718 111. When upstairs unit leak, clearly they leak hot water. They state that the association's responsibility is to make the repairs and pay for them, not the unit owner who had the leak on the unit owner below them. Where does it end? When does the unit owner responsible for the insurable events? Okay, so this is not a hurricane question, Charles, but I will give you the quick answer. And we've all dealt with this. Unfortunately, unit owners are not required to have their own HO6 policies. And the association's policy does cover drywall in, and in many cases, and, and we're dealing with claims right now in downtown Miami of floods that um, 
started in a unit, you know, a supply line burst and flooded 60 units. And the association does make the repairs and it's insured from the drywall in and in the common areas in the hallways. Yes, can you go after the unit owner to recoup any expenses you've incurred as a result of that? Absolutely. Is it worth the time and money to do it? That's a business decision that you and the board need to make. Um, all the owners that were affected by it, if they want to go after that unit owner, or hopefully they have an insurance policy, but in many, in a lot of cases, they don't. Um, again, business decision to be made. Um, but that's, you know, that's when you have those unit leaks. I mean, you have hot water systems. But being proactive in those type of situations and having good architectural modifications in place as to require, you know, you can't use fiberglass failings. They have to be stainless steel fittings, stainless steel hoses. They have to be replaced every so often, yada, yada, yada. That's all preventative measures to prevent those type of things. Okay, let's talk about Stinger Island, devastated by, by these hurricanes in 04. They cost $35 million. They had blowouts. So... Uh, for those of you that are not familiar how wind pressures work, and this is what I'm talking about, you know, you may not understand the amount of damages you really have. When you have a substantial wind event, like a hurricane or even a strong tropical storm, you have a positive wind pressure versus a negative wind pressure. And I've seen tests where these windows are just getting sucked in and sucked out because of the positive and negative wind pressure. Same thing with a roof, you have uplift pressures. You know, new roofs are supposed to sustain X amount of winds, and they actually do pull tests when they install new roofs to make sure they are uh, been installed correctly to sustain those type of hurricanes um, and, or wind events. So when you have that much pressure, um, a window may fail. It may blow out, and it happened to a lot at this building on Singer Island, and this, these units went through to the other side, and once you had one blowout, it blew out the other side. This building was condemned for nearly two years while repairs had to be made. Um, but if they don't fail, does that mean the windows have not been compromised? And this is, what this is the key of having the right expert team in place. Um, as a public adjuster, we would go in and inspect those windows. It doesn't mean that your fasteners have not been loosened. So an analogy I use a lot, you know, if a boxer's in a fight and gets his tooth knocked out from a blow, he may have four other tooths that may have been loosened that'll come out easier the next time he gets hit. Well, these, these teeth are your windows. They may have been compromised to where they're not um, rated anymore at, at the same rate that they were supposed to uh, protect the property when they were originally installed because of a wind event. But you're not gonna know that by looking at it. You have to have uh, a special professionals look at it and we're gonna, I'm gonna give you examples of some of those damages um, down the road. Florida statute. Also list the exclusions, what's not covered by the insurance. And this is what the HO6 policies for these unit owners should cover. And we're talking tilings, baseboards, paint, painting, uh, flooring material, um, anything inside the unit. This is what must be covered under the HO6 policies. Again, they're not mandatory. Unfortunately, they, the state of Florida tried a mandatory try to make it mandatory and they passed the law that you know that they are, but they passed it without thinking like they do up in Tallahassee. Uh, no one's gonna monitor that. How are we gonna force place insurance? So they, so they rescinded that pretty quickly. Um, but it's one of, one of the things we talk about when I do seminars at properties is the importance of having an HO6 property. Um, we have an Altaria Advantage program that as an Altaria Advantage client, that's one of the benefits is, is doing these seminars at your properties. Um, and, and discussing the importance of these owners having the right HO6 policy and understanding what you're buying. Understand that there's water sublimits in an HO6 policy. Some, you know, we went to a unit that was a 5,000 square foot unit, beautiful unit, and they thought they had $500,000 in coverage. The fire sprinkler busted out six inches of water throughout the unit. Beautiful marble floors were ruined, wood floors were ruined, furniture. They thought they had five hundred thousand dollars in, in coverage. Well, they had a water sublimit of only ten thousand uh, dollars, which means after their twenty five hundred dollar deductible, they only got seventy five hundred dollars. So understand what's in those HF six policies. We talk about this a lot, um, and and I can't emphasize enough how, how as management and, and board members we should uh, communicate the importance of that uh, to our communities. 
Carolyn, are hurricane shutters, even though the owners are responsible for maintaining, are hurricane shutters covered? Interesting you asked that. We were just talking about this in my company earlier today, and we've been successful in, um, in, in many cases to, yes, hurricane shutters were covered and in, in, in proving why they are. Um, does that say that some will deny it? We haven't come across a full denial yet. So that's interesting you asked that question because we literally just, I just talked about this to one of the owners of our company about two hours ago. And he sent a memo about hurricane shutters and we are getting coverage for those. Um, and this is specific to our losses that we're handling in, in Fort Myers and Sanibel. Uh, another question from John, is this different for condo association where H06 policies are not required? Um, not sure, uh, maybe I read the question late. I'm not sure what was different. Uh, so John, if you can elaborate on that. Louis asks, insurance agent sent a letter that I must obtain flood insurance on my condo that is located on the 20th floor in Hollywood Beach. Where can I obtain flood insurance? So uh, I got asked this question before and I'm not sure, there is not a mandate for flood insurance for unit specific unit owners. And, and to answer your question, you obtain the flood insurance through your agent who, who sold you your H06 policy and it's a government program. Um, why a unit on the 20th floor needs flood insurance? Um, it's a great question. And I, always, I always tell people, if you're on the first floor, second floor, third floor, yes, get flood insurance. Um, if a building is not on a flood zone, still get flood insurance. Um, I did a seminar last night talking about the importance and how many people we've had and the flood mapping is all over the place. Um, and yes, I will hold a Q&A, Jim, since you have a great last name uh, at the end so we don't run out of time. Um, we, we, we can move that. Um, but just my point on flooding real quick, uh, the mapping's all over the place. We dealt with a client uh, right in front of the bridge to go to Sanibel. That's an association that's got phased association, four phase associations inside. And for some reason, one didn't require flood insurance and the other three did. So the other three had flood insurance. And the one unit elected not to get it and say, hey, I'm not going to spend the money for it since they're not requiring it. Guess what? They had six feet of water in those units. Nothing we can do. You didn't have flood insurance. Get flood insurance. Um, there's a, a minimum limit of $250,000 for flood insurance. It's a government program. You're dealing with FEMA but it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And it, 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 uh, it was very difficult to tell those people that if they didn't have flood insurance, I'm sorry, and then you, you're screwed. Um, so again, on the 20th floor, I don't think it's mandated. I would question that. All right, so that's the first section. We're gonna talk about the importance of preconditioning, uh, preconditioned building reports. And, and what is a preconditioned building report? And, why are hurricane claims denied and proving the damages are hurricane related. So um, I already talked a little bit about that, about the window systems and having the right people and things you can do to prepare before the next storm. And that time is now folks, this is June 1st, first day of hurricane season. Um, now's the time to prepare. Um, so let's go a little bit of history. In 2005, when Wilma Katrina impacted Florida and went on to devastate the New Orleans area, all, a lot of public adjusters that were in the industry at the time commented that insurance carriers uh, are looking now for more reasons to deny a claim rather than pay a suitable amount for a claim. Um, there was a whole paradigm shift on the thought mentality in the industry. And this is why we a lot of insurance adjusters, so insurance adjusters are sent out by the insurance company and they changed. They left representing insurance companies and they moved to become public adjusters to represent the policyholder. Um, you saw a lot of shift at that time. So in the last 12 to 15 years, and I would say a lot of adjusters at Altieri came from the insurance side and was not happy though on, on what the insurance companies were doing and, and, and low balling these claims. So they, they flipped and they came over to the public adjusting side. Um, but let's talk about why they're denied. You know, we get the letter all the time. You do not meet the high windstorm deductibles. Um, another common exist, uh, reason that we're going to touch on right now is an insurance company will say, well, hey, these damages are pre-existing or due from age or wear and tear. Prove me wrong. Well, how do we prove them wrong? Now's the time to get a, a benchmark, if you will, of your current property's condition. It's a preconditioned building report. Again, if you're in Southeast Florida and you're in Dade and Broward County, um, you know, you've had your 40-year certification. 
um, that's a that's a good start. But um, for me, I like to get engineers out here, fenestration professionals, to look at your windows, your doors, make sure you look at your roofing systems, um, and just get a benchmark report done on the current building condition. That way, if a storm comes through here and an insurance company tries to deny, say, hey, you know, that was pre-existing or age or care, you can whip out this report. I'm like, no, this was not here before the storm. Um, protect the association. Um, and that report will protect that association from being denied based on pre-existing conditions uh, on any future hurricane claim, uh, but get some sort of report. Uh, I know the state requires you to hold records for seven years on a lot of these things. And I tell everybody all the time, if it's engineering, roofing, uh, concrete restoration, any type of structural report that you've got, never get rid of those. Scan them, keeping them electronic somewhere if you don't want to keep the hard copies, but always have those reports. I can't tell you, you know, when I started on the insurance side, I started working for an insurance litigation law firm and we're doing all these IRMA claims. I can't tell you how hard it was to get documentation um, from Hurricane Irma because they weren't being maintained or they, you know, people were just throwing them away. Maintain them, never throw them away. Um, have them scan and always keep so you can see the history on how the building's being maintained properly. As I mentioned, by far uh, the most extensive damages caused by high winds are these windows and fenestration systems. Um, you got things like frame movement, which is what you see here. The cars that cause that large crack uh, in that picture. You have joint damage, separation cracks, gasket ingestion. How many of us have seen the black gasket around the glazing on the outside of a window ingested in certain areas? That just doesn't happen by itself, folks. That happens because you, it was involved in a high wind event, uh, whether it was a tropical storm or hurricane. Once the gasket is ingested in certain areas, it's not going to perform to what it was originally designed to perform. So that's a failure. There are some other examples. There you see some frame movement on the left there. Um, and then you see a lot of joint damages. You think this is age and wear and tear. This is not. These are due, these are wind-related damages. This is why it's so critical having the right professionals inspect your property to show these pre-existing conditions or to show these conditions after a storm hits. And this is where you argue, um, look, we have a large amount of this building um, where all these, all the windows have been compromised. And then we, once you file a claim for all new windows and doors, your hurricane damages move from $500,000 to $8 million. And you're well above that deductible. Um, and then you look at the roofing system, obviously the other parts, but the windows are by far the things that people don't inspect close enough. Um, the insurance adjusters are certainly not gonna go in there with a fine tooth comb and, and, and look at your fenestration system and say, hey, uh, you know, this is, this is damaged. That's why you have to have your own representation and hiring a public adjuster so, so we can look at everything soup to nuts. So, be prepared, document your current building condition, all structural elements. Uh, every resident should videotape indoor conditions before the storm. Photographs, you know, they say a photo says a thousand words, well, video says a million words. Um, I had an, uh, during an Irma claim I was working on, a resident sent me a video. They stayed in the unit in downtown Miami and they, you just see water splashing in through the sides. And that video was, was fantastic. Um, so tell, communicate today. I know everybody's getting their hurricane manuals out in preparation. This is the time to say, document the current building condition inside your unit. Every resident should do that and, and store that uh, in the association, get it, separate the files. Please mark, clearly mark the unit numbers. Um, you'd be surprised how many people give me a batch of photos and I don't know what's the unit's what. So um, be, but be proactive. You know, that could lead to good discounts down the road, the more proactivity you can. Maybe not in today's market, but it did in the past. Uh, but be as proactive as possible. And engaging the right team is the key of that proactivity. And I'm going to keep saying it, you know, having the right adjusting team, having the right engineers, having the right restoration team, um, you know, talk to your elevator contract landscapers. They have lots of labor for debris cleanup. Get, you know, get those agreements in place today. <laughs> All right, filing a claim. Um, let me just run through some of the questions real quick. 
Uh, let's see, Kurt, I had damage to hurricane shutters from Ian. So it, was, it wasn't working for Nicole. Windows held though. When insurance inspector looked at the shutters, support furniture as an awning. So the company rejected the claim, simply misidentified the shutter. Damage is less than deductible. So I do the claim, how can I make sure the inspector uses the correct language? Um, well, we if this is the inspector the insurance company sent out, you need a public adjuster to come look at it. They'll identify what it is, uh, Kurt. Uh, they'll use the right language, whether it's an awning or it's a shutter. Um, you know, we will identify the proper terminology and, and review your policy to see what's covered. Uh, when governor is declaring state of emergency, how does this help us with our claims? Um, you know, declaring a state of emergency just means an imminent threat is coming. Um, don't waste time filing your claims. Uh, let me tell you, when there's a hurricane comes through, the longer you wait to file a claim, the longer it goes down on a pile of thousands of claims that are being filed because of the hurricane. So we tell people don't waste time. Again, if you have a relationship with a public adjusting company like ours, we'll, we'll file the claim on your behalf. We'll get out there. If you're an Altaria Advantage client, you're on a priority list. Um, you know, we were out there day one after Hurricane Ian hit, driving through Fort Myers. We had boats, helicopters to get on Sanibel. Um, you know, any means necessary to get where we had to get to help our clients out. Um, so uh, just have the right professionals in place and that, that'll help you uh, for the best results. How would the precondition report differ from the milestone? It won't. Uh, if you have the milestone inspection, um, that's a good barometer that'll benchmark your community. You just want to make sure the milestone inspection, I haven't seen all the details. I know there is a glitch bill coming out, uh, Senate Bill 154 that removed the terms for flooring and foundation. So those no longer have to be inspected. Talk to your association attorney about that. Um, but the more detail, the better. The milestone inspection, I'm not sure how detailed they're going to go into the windows and fenestration system. And to me, that's the biggest budget line item on there. So uh, those are things I'm looking forward to see once they start getting done. All right, let's talk about following the hurricane system. What was something in the chat? <clears throat> so my colleague, uh, Gil, put something in the chat for everybody, um, which is uh, uh, the PDF on, on the preparation from Altieri. Um, take a look at that when you get a chance. So in this section, we're going to talk about the statute of limitations, which unfortunately keeps changing. Um, and the process of filing a hurricane claim. So let's talk about a Florida statute that you guys are not used to. This is not 718, 720 or anything like that. This is 627.701. This talks about a claim. This was just changed um, and not for the better. So uh, when I started this nearly five years ago, the Florida statute gave you a three-year period to file a claim for a windstorm event. Uh, for either a claim or a supplemental claim, you had three years. Why did you have three years? Well, you may not notice you have roof damage to like a year later when water starts leaking or two years later. So there was a good period of time uh, where you may have had an uh, initial claim or a supplemental claim when you realize, hey, you know, my roof is leaking. Let me file a supplemental claim. About two and a half years ago, that changed down to two years. Well, now it's down to one year. Um, the our elected officials say this is being done to light a fire under the insurance companies to process claims quicker. Uh, it, it's not going to help. It's it's one of those things that just does not give you a good time period um, in just in, in 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 determining damages. So what we tell everybody is now again, don't waste time. After a hurricane claim, have your whole entire property inspected because uh, you only have eighteen months after that or not after that, you only have 18 months from the data loss to file a supplemental claim. So not only do you only have one year to file an initial claim, you only have six more months to file a supplemental claim if you notice any other additional damages. So not only the time, again, why this is a reason to have a professional team uh, process your claim for you across T's and dot I's. Um, I can tell you at Altieri, I mean, we sell 98% uh, of our claims without having to go to litigation but because we're very specific in the reporting we do. Um, so that's a Florida statute. Got to know there's one year, you have one year. Now, if you need to sue your insurance company, this year, this did not change, fortunately. Florida statute 95.11 
you have five years to file litigation with the insurance company. Excuse me. Um, so if you if you have not come to a settlement in in any type of um, resolution cannot be obtained and you have to sue your insurance company, now you have five years. So to summarize again, tidbit information I never knew. You have now you only have one year to file a claim for a windstorm event. Uh, and you have five years to file litigation for that claim. Uh, Kimberly uh, Gill, she says she's unable to download the attachment, and maybe we can do an email blast later if other people have having trouble. Um, okay, so this is the last uh, well, not one of the last sessions. We're coming near uh, this this section. The process of filing a claim. What we're taught as managers, we're, we're taught to contact our insurance agent. They file the claim. It goes to a claims department. The insurance company will take the claim and they'll send an insurance adjuster out to inspect your property. Make no mistake about it. The insurance adjuster is looking after the insurance company's best interest. And it's unfortunate. And remember that paradigm shift I told you about after Wilma and Katrina hit. There's just, they're going to look for every reason to not pay a suitable amount for a claim and or deny one. So, but that step doesn't change. You should always call your insurance agent. In fact, call them before the imminent storm hits. Make sure they're doing their job, stay on top of them because there are a lot of good insurance agents out there, but there are also a lot of bad insurance agents out there um, that only understand about making commissions and so forth. So just stay on top of them. Um, a lot of them, like I said, the good ones will be proactive and already put, put uh, your property on notice with the insurance companies. I can't emphasize enough how much documentation you should have, document, 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 right after that storm, photos and videos again. Um, and again, continue that open communication line with your agent to make sure they did notify the insurance company. If you don't have their cell phone on your phone, then you need to call your agent up and say, give me your cell phone number. I need to have access to you. Maintain all your repair invoices. Again, when I was working with these Irma claims, it was so difficult to get historic information, any repair invoices, any uh, proposals for repairs, just maintain all that to submit because all that has to go uh, with the proof of loss and will be fired. Engage a public adjuster. I, um, I came to this business because I saw what was happening on the insurance side and I can't emphasize enough the importance of having um, a public adjuster. The insurance company has an insurance adjuster to protect their interests, you should have a public adjuster to protect your interests. And that's exactly what we do. Um, and we take that burden off the manager's shoulders. We will take all that documentation and put it together. We will do our own construction estimates and we will make sure everything is accounted for. And then we will submit the proof of loss on behalf of the association um, with all of our backup documentation with it. Um, very important the proof of loss is a legal document and i don't recommend any manager sign a proof of loss because it is a legal document board members should be the only one signing that proof of loss um, so just keep that in mind and again this is no different than what your association attorney will tell you a couple questions coming in I'm, I'm sorry if i missed your question i'm trying to keep up how do we get paid our our payments based on a percentage of our recovery on average it's 10 percent um we don't inflate. We don't, um, uh, you know, sometimes we'll negotiate a lower rate, but on average, it is 10%. And we get paid when you get paid. We don't get paid up front. We don't get paid what have you. As we collect for you, that's when we get. Hey, Mari, Corey. Hi, Mari. Hollywood here. We're in the midst of a rainstorm April 12th. Oh, that one, the wonderful flooding. No float on the ground, extent of rain cause our roof to be overtaxed and rain exceeded the goosenecks, few areas, one in the AC closets, drywall issues. The adjuster from the insurance company reported we had roof leaks. Okay. Then proved to be incorrect by the engineer that we had inspected the roofs after the storm. Who sent the engineer out? The insurance company? This is a reason you should call us uh, after that. You know, what do we need to do to get this corrected? I'm afraid it'll be a hindrance insurance renewal. Well, it, nothing's been filed so far. If it, it looks like they're denying your claim, so just give us a call. Um, and we'll find out. Um, Marilyn Bartlett, I don't know what area you're in, but you know we cover all of Florida, so you can give us a call. Um, Jay may may not divulge. 
I already talked about our fees. I'm, I'm, you know, we're straightforward. We don't do, and I'll even uh, say this. If you have an offer from an insurance company already, if you have a million dollar claim and you have a $200,000 offer and we get you the other 800,000, our fees are only based on the 800,000. We don't, our percentage is not based on whatever you got offered, but it does behoove you to get us in right at the beginning because we set the expectation. You want in a public adjuster company to set that expectation on the proper uh, amount to be recovered. You don't want the insurance adjuster to come in and set that expectation. All right, uh, let me get through the class and I'll come back and get some more questions at the end. But I love the questions, guys. We're almost done. Um, this is the last section, alternate dispute resolution. Uh, I've talked about public adjusting. We're gonna talk about an appraisal clause, which again, is something I was never taught in the process of litigation. Why you hire a public adjuster? I mean, again, we deal everything soup to nuts. We direct, coordinate, we do the inspections. And as a prior manager, I understand the importance of communication, right? So we update the management and or board member on a weekly basis on where we're at to make sure you're prepared with the proper updates. We'll even go to board meetings. If you need us at a board meeting, we're happy to attend a board meeting. Or we're happy to give that update so the manager can use them in their management reports or report whatever they need to report at a board meeting. We help you understand your policy. Again, as an Altieri Advantage client, a policy review, which is the best benefit of our Altieri Advantage program, um, to make sure your agent sold the right policy with the right endorsements, the right coverages, the right limits, and so forth. Saves you time. Um, in many cases, in, in a hurricane event, we're able, in many cases, uh, not all cases, but we do everything we can with the product we have to get advance payment out in hand. I mentioned this earlier. We had a client in Fort Myers. It's a $15 million claim. Well, we got him $1.5 million in the first 120 days. So having that cash in hand, they were able to pay the cleanup fees and start the repairs without having to special assess or get a bank loan. Um, so having, again, the right, again, there are a lot of bad public adjusters out there, as with any trade. There are bad eggs out there, especially after a hurricane when you see all these people coming from other states. So oh, let's go get roofers and adjusters and all types of people. Um, appraisal clause. So an appraisal clause, let's talk about this because this is a way of settling a claim without having to go to litigation. And this is identified in your property insurance policy. I had a conversation with a Brown and Brown agent who was an agent producer for 15 years about this dispute resolution about the appraisal clause, and he had no idea what I was talking about. This is why I put this in the class. This is a means of selling a claim uh, to invoke the appraisal provision. If we are at 10 million and the insurance company's at 3 million, uh, we wanna try to resolve this by invoking the appraisal clause. Now there are mandatory appraisal clauses and voluntary appraisal clauses. We hope everybody has a mandatory appraisal clause. That's something to talk to your agent about at renewal to make sure you have a mandatory appraisal clause. If he doesn't know what you're talking about, talk to his boss. Um, why? Because you don't want to go to litigation. That's just going to take longer. Um, when you invoke an appraisal clause and you go there, an umpire is appointed, similar like a mediator. Um, once you're agreeing on appraisal, you're agreeing on whatever the umpire says is the final number. So we may be at 10 million, they may be at 2 million. And once the umpire reviews all of our documentation and everything, why we say it's 10 million, they may say, all right, it's 8 million. And that's the number we get to. Um, if we're not able to settle it through our documentation and they still want to invoke appraisal and revoke appraisal, that's another means to settle a claim. Uh, otherwise, it's going to get delayed a year to two years in litigation, which unfortunately happens sometimes. Um, and after that claim is filed, and hope, and I just talked about the several directions, but again, having that reputable public adjuster uh, engaged, have that relationship with um, someone you can already call and, and process your claims expeditiously, uh, will resolve and settle these cases, in most cases, um, uh, to a suitable amount to our clients. Uh, but in a rare case, it has to go to an insurance litigation law firm and please don't ever hire a law firm who's advertising on billboards, taxi cabs, if there's still taxis out there, or uh, benches or bus benches or anything like that. Those are the ones you want to stay away from. We work with insurance litigation law firms. So if you have a good reputation with a public adjuster and it has to get to that, we're happy to make the recommendations. And or your association attorney may also make the recommendation. So to res the review, step one, make sure you have a good public adjuster gauge. Two, we'll provide the proper notice. Timing is everything. 
three, you have the right team of experts ready to go. And now's the time to have that team of experts. You know, so we can record the investigation, review all the reports and documents. We file the proof of loss on their behalf. We do have a negotiating uh, with the insurance company to settle the claim, attempt to go to appraisal if it has to, prepare for trial if it has to, but bottom line, we're handing you a check that's a suitable amount for all your repairs, uh, less your deductibles, less our fee, which is usually, uh, by the time we're done, we, we've uh, very rarely had uh, issues where the, the amount still didn't um, amount to enough to make the repair. So um, they're usually suitable amounts. Um, we have a YouTube channel out there. Please just go out to Altaria Insurance Consultants, look at all of our video testimonies we have out there, uh, what we do, how we do it. Couple case uh, scenarios, twin high-rise buildings, 18-story high-rise buildings and Hurricane Michael. The first offer on the insurance company was $3.865 million. We ended up getting them $16 million when we got in there. And our fee was only predicated on the difference, not what the insurance company offered. Uh, that's a 420% increase, folks. Another uh, case study there, Hurricane Irma, 19-story high-rise. Insurance company didn't offer, they denied the claim. It was under the deductible. We got them $15 million when all was said and done. That's a huge increase, guys. Again, I, I can't emphasize enough having the right, and this is all legit repairs. It's not, we're not manufacturing anything. And again, there's a lot of public adjusters that are bad eggs, but having the right team, having a family owned company that's been enthralled, enthralled in this industry uh, since 1988. And we're always advocating on behalf of policyholders involved in nonprofit organizations. Um, this is what we do. I get a lot of questions on the insurance market. So I added a couple of slides on where we're at because the insurance market is crazy. Um, through the last five years, we've had 104 weather and climate disasters. This is why we're seeing the price increases that exceeded a billion dollars. $843 billion over these 104 events over the last five years. That's at the NOAA website. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what's causing these massive increases is these acts of God. Hurricane, hailstorm, severe weather. This is just 2022, guys. This is 18 events in 2022. Um, you haven't even paid for this yet. I can't give you an educated answer what insurance companies are going to do. All I can tell you is just be prepared. Um, we're going to get hit again. I mean, I... This is one thing. If there's any light at the end of the tunnel that I can share with you, even if it's a smidge of light, is if you look at the hard market going back to 2006, we were there before. And then it went down. It stabilized. So we can only hope that it starts to stabilize as it did in 07 and going downward. So if you look at these hard market rates, I know they're crazy and I know they're tough pills to swallow nowadays, but if there's any shit of light at the end of the tunnel, um, we've been there before. So we've weathered that storm and I'm sure we can weather this one. Let's just hope that we get no new hurricanes. And there's just a summary, $165 billion in 2022 have been paid. Um, the numbers have not come in obviously yet for 2023, but all the Hurricane Ian's claims and Hurricane Nicole claims are being paid this year. Um, 20 events, they go down the list. 2017 was obviously, you know, with Irma and a bunch of other items, $306 billion. We're expected to exceed that in 2023. So um, these are these weather and climate disasters that are just causing, um, causing the chaos in the insurance market we see today. That's it, folks. Thank you. Uh, I'll run through some questions. Can an HOA form its own insurance company in Florida? You're talking about self-insurance, Jay, and uh, it's not recommended if you get, I mean, the money to self-insure um, in most cases exceeds the money to, to get your premium. Condo, Karen asks, condo client put one of those cool roof coverings after being told from them it was a new roof. Insurance company refused to cover it and they dropped their coverage. Manager needs to be aware of this. Yeah, I mean, before you do those coverings and those type of things, talk, talk, talk to professionals, talk to an engineer. And those are the best professionals to talk to, get there in, in specific roofing engineer. So um, you got some polls coming out, if you can answer those questions. Uh, yeah, so Steve, just before you uh, move on to the next couple of questions, just wanted to uh, 
thank you for everyone that joined. I did just launch that pause, poll, so if you could just please give us some feedback so we can improve on future courses. And like I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to be mailing, emailing out the slides, the recording, that hurricane preparedness doc that Gil shared. In case some of you weren't able to uh, download it, we will be sharing that in the email, as well as the course evaluation form, which uh, please make sure you fill out so you can get your credits. And once the webinar closes out, you will be also direct, uh, directed to the URL automatically. But in case, for whatever reason, it doesn't work for you, that link will also be in the email. Um, so thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, yeah, Steve, if you want to go ahead and continue with the Q&A, you're welcome to do so. Yeah, and Carolyn asked a, a great question. Should we have a relationship with the public just or before the storm? Absolutely. We have become an Altaria Advantage client. This develops a relationship, uh, a comfort level with us as a company, with you and your boards. Um, you can call us anytime. I have a client that called me. They had a pipe leak the other day. It was minimal, $10,000. I said, it doesn't make sense to put in a claim for that. Obviously, you're not going to hire us to work a claim. I'm not going to take 10% of that. I mean, it just doesn't make sense, but I'm happy to guide you through the process. I mean, we'll ghostwrite emails for you if we have to, if you have an issue with the insurance company. This is what that relationship development. Relationship is, is so important to us. Um, we want to be a resource for you. Um, Amir, can we have someone from the association to appraise the value of the building? Um, no, unless that someone from the association is a professional appraiser. Uh, if you're talking real estate appraisal, uh, again, that doesn't mean nothing when it talks about this. And when we talked about an insurance appraisal, that's construction costs. Um, I would call uh, most companies that do reserve studies, which are now mandatory, do insurance appraisals. Um, those are the professionals you want to stick to. Um, does your team perform preconditioned building reports? We do not. We recommend those come from uh, professional engineering. Um, you know, they have fenestration people um, that come in and do that. Uh, is hurricane insurance obligation in Florida? Uh, associations are required to carry that. That was one of the earlier slides. They must protect uh, the association. Uh, to answer Powell, yes, they are required to collect. Karen, uh, we have 38 single story, 19L. Uh, Gil is typing an answer for that. Yes, the answer is yes. Um, the answer is always yes when I ask for a need of public adjuster, and that's because an insurance adjuster is protecting the insurance company's interest, not yours. A public adjuster is protecting their interests. Um, another Karen, condo client, but one of the, oh, we, I answered that one. Uh, Mari, engineer is a person we regularly have examine our roofs annually to keep the warranty. Usually it's a roofing company that does those annual inspections, but if you have an engineer, great. As long as you get a signed seal on that report, um, keep those reports forever. Don't ever, don't ever um, throw those reports away. Do you market to single family residences? We do. Um, right now we are um, handling, like I said, over 500 million in claims. Um, uh, but if we have like fires and I mean, we have agents, adjusters all over the, the state um, doing fire claims or flood claims and that type of stuff. Can I talk about wind mitigation? Uh, Roberta, wind mitigation or these mitigation credits every year that your agent should fill out these forms to see if you qualify for any mitigation credits, your property, whether you're fully shuttered or fully impact window, um, that type of thing. When was the last time, you know, uh, you know, how old your HVAC units on top of your building, that type of stuff. Those are conversations to have with your agent, uh, but you want to make sure you get the proper uh, mitigation credits every year, anything to save a buck, especially in this insurance market. Umberto Roque, how you doing, Umberto? What insurance adjuster would you recommend? Insurance adjuster, I wouldn't recommend any. I, you, I'd recommend a public adjuster to come in. Um, we're the relationship you want to have, Umberto. Um, the insurance adjuster is decided by the insurance company. Um, and there's some good ones out there. I don't I want to speak negatively about insurance adjusters. It's the co insurance company that's, I mean, they, the insurance adjuster may do right and put in the right amount uh, in their work and we will agree with them. Yeah, okay, we're in agreement. They may send that to the company and then the company may deny it. They're like, no, take this out, take that out, take this out. Um, and then it's our job as your public adjuster to fight. No, we put that back in and here's why. Um, and if that ever goes to appraisal, a mediator, uh, umpire will see that and be like, why did you take this out? It's legit. Uh, Monica, will the form for the credits be emailed or placed in question? I will email uh, the form of the credits. Diego's typing that answer. That's a live doc. 
Uh, it's the survey form. Your feedback is appreciated. Uh, do, 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 do. I think I got all the questions. Oh, Diego, Gil, is, is there any? Oh, Ruth, did I get your questions, Ruth? HO6 policy with citizens, even if the unit's on the fifth floor, ninth story building. Because you need to have flood, you know, I'm hearing the need to have flood insurance policies, and then I'm hearing, no, you don't. So, Ruth, I'm happy if you get me your phone number or type it in the chat or what have you, I'm happy to get back to you on that, uh, on that flood question, because uh, you haven't been required to have a flood policy um, on with your HO6 policy. Um, the association is, if you're in a flood zone, absolutely. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to get back to you on that one. Uh, should we, uh, I think I answered all the questions. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. I don't see many any other ones coming in. Or actually, one just came in from uh, Shira. Not about hurricanes, but in regards to claim from resident of accident in the property against the association insurance. Do they need a public adjuster or an insurance adjuster does the work? It depends on the accident. So we're talking a liability claim. If it was a, a slip and fall, that type of thing. Um, typically, you know, the, the reason for the accident is pretty clear. Um, you know, I would see what the um, what the insurance adjuster says. In most cases, insurance adjuster does the work for those liability type claims, but it depends on the accident. Now, if a boiler explodes, which I've had, um, you know, being in the business long enough, you'll come across everything. Uh, if a boiler explodes, that's an equipment uh, claim, right? And, and, and then you have no hot water and you have a mess in the, in the mechanical room and that's that's all property and boiler, and boiler machinery coverage, then yes, that would make sense to bring in a public adjuster for that type of thing. Uh, but again, depending on the accident you're talking about, if we're talking a liability accident, will it be a claim on your liability policy? Uh, then the insurance adjuster is is usually suitable for that. Hope I answered that, Shira. Uh, mirror answered that. Okay, I think that's it, Diego. All right, well, thank you so much, Steve. Uh, thank you so much, Gail. We really appreciate it. You guys did a great job, and um, thank you for going through and answering everyone's questions. And again, for anyone that's still on, we'll be sending out uh, all the information the, the PowerPoint slides, the recording, the evaluation link. And uh, please give Altieri a couple weeks to get those credits in. Yes, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, is there anything else you want to add, Steve? No, just my contact information there, which includes my cell number, guys. Don't be afraid. I'm going to be the resource for you. Um, you know, our Altaria Advantage program, can we, we're going to send that out. Diego, I send that document to you. Yes, yes, I'll be adding that in the email as well. So the Altaria Advantage program is very simple. It's a page and a half document. There's, so once you understand to become an Altaria Advantage member, there's zero cost to the program. And there's zero obligation to even use this for a claim. It's all about for us developing that relationship with you and that rapport with you and your boards. Um, just to give you a, just a simple two-sided agreement. Again, the policy review for me is the most important factor, but we do these seminars, we do the CE courses, we review your disaster playbook and make sure everything's in order. Then we provide you legislative updates because we are involved uh, with the FAPIA, which is Florida Association of Public Insurance Adjusters. We have board members. These are nonprofits that we fight on your behalf. And we advocate on behalf of community associations and all policyholders every year in Tallahassee um, and that type of thing. And then, of course, you know, as an Altair Advantage, your priority response. I mean, we had uh, 12 Altair Advantage clients that were affected by Hurricane Ann. Those are the ones we responded to first and got our adjustment teams out there first. And then we went and helped a bunch of other. I mean, we, we, we have over 85 association clients from Hurricane Ann. Uh, we're able to do some great work in short time periods. So again, having the right team, if there's anything I leave you today, have your right team in place today. And hopefully we can be part of that team. Thank you guys. Great. Thank you so much, Steve and Gail. And thank you so much for everyone that attended. Have a great day. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. For more great educational content, click the subscribe button now.